Hi guys, today I'm bringing you a video on the British small box respirator which was a uh, the general issue uh, respirator introduced during the middle of the First World War for use by the uh, British Army, it was also used by the Royal Navy and the uh, RAF uh, for a time after the war, after its formation at the end of the war. Um, it This is a reproduction, uh, it's a reproduction from Soldier of Fortune which I've done quite a lot of modification to. Uh, I may do a uh, repro review of one of these if I can borrow one off someone that's not been heavily modified. Um, this one, as I say, I've done quite a bit of uh, alteration to it which I'll run through in a video. And as usual in these videos I've got the Haversack contents as well, uh, just the odd bits and pieces that go along with the respirator. So the first thing we'll have a look at is the, uh, the respirator itself. Um, the overall reproduction of these is not bad, the face piece is very good. Um, it's a fairly accurate representation of the original. The design um, of the small box respirator was uh, inspired by the German uh, gummy mask, the, the face piece that is, whereas the gummy mask uh, had a filter attached to the face piece. Uh, this set the standard, the small box respirator set the standard um, for British service respirators uh, until the mid-1940s of having obviously the haversack worn on the chest when at the alert with a hose leading down to a filter a canister um, and it's the first uh, proper respirator as opposed to a hood uh, as earlier designs were uh, for issue to all troops for general issue uh, the large box respirator which preceded it was uh, only saw limited issue. Um, so the basic design uh, has uh, a mouthpiece similar to that used on uh, sort of snor snorkels uh, and that you clasp that in the mouth and then there's a nose clip um, and the mouthpiece leads to this what were originally brass in this case I think it's painted steel but uh, the uh, metal tube, a metal attachment that comes off the front here to which both the hose and a rubber flapper exhale valve attach so you breathe in and out through the same uh, piece here when you breathe out the air is directed through the flapper valve and when you breathe in it's drawn in through the hose. Um, the respirator, w respirators were marked with a size I believe it was one to four and I put a three on mine uh, I did that myself with a, with a stamp just based on photographs of originals I've seen. Um, and the the eyepieces were attached in, in different ways and the reproduction here uh, replicates the method of using um, twine to uh, fit the eyepieces into the face piece there. The head harness consists of uh, two pieces of elastic and a non-elasticated strap at the top which could be adjusted using a safety pin which should be black, I will be replacing that, it shouldn't be bright. Uh, and the safety pin was contained within a uh, the record card which I will get onto the details of that with the accessories in a moment. The hose fitted to this is an original uh, which I replaced the reproduction hose with. It's considerably better than the the repro hose that was attached when I received it. As I say the actual face piece itself is good. The filter is not a, the canister is not a bad representation obviously it doesn't have any uh, rubber valve or anything in the bottom it is just open but uh, it's not bad it's the right sort of size compared to uh, compared it to an original the right sort of size and it uh, it's not bad um, I mean as, as reproductions go it's it's not bad at all you could I believe some of the ZB Gorman uh, post-war uh, or second war private purchase respirators had a similar type of canister so if you wanted to replace the canister too you could perhaps find uh, a filter from one of those to use so that's the respirator itself uh, oh the, uh, I'll just run over the details obviously I said I've replaced the hose a wider a replacement hose on which is an original from a second war obviously it's a second war hose uh, I also replaced the flapper valve with a, a rubber homemade example which isn't perfect but it's better than the um, very heavy uh, gauge rubber uh, the black flapper valve that was on originally uh, and it's actually just held on I, the original seems to be held on with a, in a variety of ways some with with thin wire some with a sort of um, a lacquered finish over the top of the wire and I've seen um, one example that had a, a sort of black, uh, almost a, I, I don't know if it was a rubber band or, or what band, but I've, I've done just this with ins it's actually insulation tape, but it doesn't look too bad, and that just helps hold it on there. Though it will stay on, a, like stretching the neck of a balloon over, it will it would stay on anyway. Um, so I don't think that looks too bad overall. As uh, with the modifications, it looks fine. Um, 
I added the safety pin myself. Uh, the, it comes with a rec the record card is bought separately from Tommy's Pack Fillers. Uh, I'll put a link to both uh, Soldier of Fortune and Tommy's Pack Fillers in the description because some other bits come from them as well. Uh, in fact, I'll just pause a minute and I'll bring in the other bits and pieces from them and we can do that uh, separately. So here we have the haversack contents that go along with the respirator. Uh, the first is um, a little record book and repair set, which I might have to pause to get out of its slip. I know it will come. It will come out one-handed. Still need to get a tripod. I have a monopod, but not a tripod. Eee. There we go. Uh, so you'd have a little. Uh, record book in there with hours uh, or parts of an hour worn for shell gas and obviously the name and date of issue at the top there and then hours worn for cloud gas so there's the distinction there between uh, obviously gas delivered by shell uh, and cloud attacks which were released from cylinders and using the prevailing wind conditions as drift across and it's provided with the little patches on the um, outside here which were used for repairing slits in the uh, material of the face piece. So there we go, that's the record book and as I say that's made by Tommy's Pack Fillers. And another, uh, all, the, all this is reproduction, none of the, uh, apart from the hose, none of the uh, components here are original, again from Tommy's Pack Fillers, uh, is a Glasso anti-dimming composition box. Uh, and in the here I have a cloth from a Mark 7 uh, sort of 50s anti-dim just in there as a representati representation of the, the cloth and they, the boxes contained a little tube and this is a 3, uh, three gram tube of uh, super glue uh, with a uh, dust cap, a steel dust cap as the cap uh, painted silver just as a representation in there for when this is being displayed and it doesn't look too bad, it, it's a fair representation of the original uh, Glasso anti-dimming uh, outfit that came with the, which was issued with the uh, small box respirator. So we'll have a look at the haversack now, and again, uh, this is a Soldier of Fortune reproduction. Um, much like the Mark V respirator haversack, it's it's quite a good reproduction. The press studs are possibly one of the things that uh, lets it down. Uh, as I, I can't remember what date was on here. I think it was actually 1914. Case uh, canvas whale, so I've changed it to an 18. Um, so yes, that was uh, one amusing little uh, uh, detail. I, as usual with these, I've swapped the cord that it comes with. It comes with a very bright white cord. I've swapped that for proper whip cord, um, which then goes down to these D's. When worn on the chest, uh, when worn uh, slung, the strap is extended like this. Uh, as you can see, there's a buckle here to adjust it, which I had to do a little bit of adjustment on so that it would properly grip the strap. Um, but when worn on the chest, the uh, shoulder strap is shortened down by using this leather tab here, uh, pushed over this stud. If I can do it one-handed, <laughs> you get the idea anyway. This uh, you shorten off the the neck strap using this uh, little leather strap on the side. Overall, it's not a bad reproduction. Uh, it includes. In the base here, if we can get some light in, uh, you can see in there there is a metal spring or a metal uh, piece there which uh, lifts the filter off the bottom of the uh, haversack and allows air to circulate to the base, which is a nice inclusion uh, of the original design. So uh, there we go, that's the uh, haversack. So there we have the small box respirator with uh, its haversack and accessories. Um, it was used, it was first trialled in early 1916. The first major order for them was put out in mid-1916 and by late 1916 they were on large scale issued to the British Army. Very effective respirator, probably one of the better designs to come out of the First World War and saw service through into the 1920s, the late 1920s when the uh, Mark III general service respirator uh, came into service, the Mark III face piece which was a, a more modern rubber design. So I hope you found that interesting, and until next time, bye for now.